for slight pictures coming in right now. Prime Minister Modi, they're being received by the Uzbek uh, President of Uzbekistan hosting the SCO summit and India will be hosting it in 2023. Shiv, uh, coming back to the question of China, you know, what is also very interesting is and what is adding fuel to speculation is that neither side is confirming or denying anything. When the Foreign Secretary yesterday ahead of the Prime Minister's uh, departure held a press briefing in Equatra and he was asked about this, he only kept saying, we'll apprise you, we will keep you updated on all the bilaterals. Since then, we've found out and we have a confirmation from the Indian side also. Earlier, of course, the Russian side had confirmed it about that bilateral between Prime Minister Modi and President Putin. Then, of course, Prime Minister Modi and the Iranian President and, of course, uh, with his Uzbek host as well. But tantalizingly, no confirmation or denial as to whether there will be a pull aside or a bilateral between India and China. Absolutely. And that's precisely why the uh, you know, outside chance of that kind of meeting happening is definitely there. Uh, uh, I've, I can tell you that I've been speaking to my sources as well, and uh, the effort is very much on. And like you know, Polomi, since you've covered summits of this kind, pull-asides are by their very nature uh, kind of last minute. They happen uh, during last minute negotiations. The place is confirmed. Uh, you know, if, there's a, if there are any very quick talking points, uh, you know, those are uh, discussed. Typically, they last about 15 to 20 minutes because there's nothing substantive that's discussed. It's more about the symbolism and the message that it sends out to the two leaders, uh, you know, are willing to engage even in a kind of semi uh, semi formal setting within the ages of a larger summit. Uh, and that's very much possible. Uh, I'm not surprised at all that uh, neither side has confirmed the possibility. But like you said, very, very important that they've not outright denied anything except that there will be no uh, you know, structured bilateral one-on-one -on -one between uh, uh, Prime Minister Modi and President Xi Jinping. But outside of that, the possibilities of a pull aside are most certainly there. Uh, uh, remember that the, 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 the fact that this platform uh, is the first stage uh, on which President Xi and Prime Minister Modi will be, uh, you know, sharing space for the first time since the standoff began, uh, you know, makes it a, a, an extremely valuable opportunity. The timing of this disengagement from Gogra Hot Springs, which, mind you, we should also remind our viewers, Polomi, the Gogra Hot Springs friction point was one point which up till seven to eight months ago, China was refusing to disengage from. It was not even willing to discuss it during the core commander uh, level talks between both sides. So the very fact that they have, uh, you know, uh, have been forced to, uh, you know, agree to disengage from this point just before this SCO summit ob obviously suggests the, you know, the presence of uh, Indian uh, uh, diplomatic machinery and uh, the fact that the Indian army has stood pretty steadfast in those areas, deployed in larger numbers than ever before, perhaps in history, uh, you know, until the 1962 war. Uh, so uh, there's a great deal happening behind the scenes that one doesn't see. What you're going to see at the SCO summit is a lot of smiles and handshakes, whether that handshake will take place between Prime Minister Xi and uh, President Xi and Prime Minister Modi remains to be seen. But also remember, these are two leaders, and this is something that we're going to ask Geeta in a moment, uh, Polomi. These are two leaders who are extremely, extremely conscious of the symbolism of their photographs. And remember that China is at our doorstep right now, and to be seen, uh, you know, shaking hands and sitting with the Chinese leader right now would send out a kind of message uh, both uh, domestically here as well as well as politically. So all of those things will have to be taken into account as well because those messages will be extremely powerful. If you sit down, there will be politics over why are you shaking hands with a guy who's sitting at your doorstep in such large numbers and threatening your territory and encroaching on your territory. If it doesn't, uh, you know, uh, there will be questions raised about why are you not engaging when your army is doing all the work. So all of those different permutations and combinations, diplomatically speaking, will come to the for, which is why diplomacy is such a complicated issue. But I think, I think, uh, like I said, the, the, the bottom line is the SEO summit provides that valuable opportunity for some kind of a message to go out, because this is not really just about India and China. Other countries, as we've seen in the recent past, from Taiwan to the United States to Australia to Japan, they're all involved and invested in many ways directly as to what happens between India and China next. So uh, all of those considerations kind of get baked into the mix uh, and all our diplomats, some of the finest in the world, will be working on this now. Absolutely. And Shiv, like you said, even a handshake could send out a big symbolic message. So everyone's going to be, I, I presume there'll be a lot of people who will be watching those pictures coming in from Samarkand with a hawk's eye right now to see that when the leaders arrive for that group photograph, what sort of uh, vibe 
do uh, the Chinese and the Indian side exchange have uh, the body language? Is there a handshake or not? Do they stand next to each other? All of that will be watched extremely uh, keenly as uh, well. Shiv, uh, for the benefit of our viewers, because we're talking about the disengagement and the de-escalation process, uh, uh, in um, uh, between India and China as far as the border standoff uh, from 2020 is concerned, where does it currently stand? Uh, the, the good question. Uh, remember that the, the disengagement that happened uh, earlier this month from the Gogra Hot Springs uh, area, Polami, uh, was the last uh, location of uh, friction that emanated starting April 2020. So in effect, the disengagement from Gogra Hot Springs signals the end of the first layer of disengagement. It's a very limited disengagement. The first layer of disengagement from all the friction points that erupted in April 2020. But that does not mean the standoff is over. In fact, very far from it. The standoff uh, is uh, still continuing in large strength. Uh, the, the legacy issues of Depsang and Demchok, which is where uh, Chinese encroachments have been uh, pretty, pretty large compared to the other places, uh, have been uh, you know, uh, 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 outstanding issues from way before 2020. They came in uh, from you know, uh, nearly a decade before that. So uh, uh, the other tantalizing question now is going to be, does the SCO summit or anything under it or anything after it provide some kind of shape or timeline as to how the Indian and Chinese side will engage to resolve those outstanding issues. Those have been much more stubborn issues, follow me, than the 2020 standoff itself. But the very fact that China uh, was in many ways persuaded or forced to you know, agree to disengage from Gogra Hot Springs was a very good signal. But the very fact that there are still these outstanding issues right now uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, makes this a live and present issue. It's far from over. Anyone, anyone seeing this small disengagement as uh, uh, something more than just a limited piece of positive forward movement uh, is delusional in my view, because uh, China still continues to be deployed in extremely large numbers, as does India in those particular areas like never before. Uh, and this continues to be the world's largest military standoff.